Hi, Century Bridge teachers. I assume many of you already know me, uh, but for those who don't, I am Grayson Mick, or uh, from the promotional videos, you may know me as Hu Jiaobing Lao Shi. Uh, I am a senior English instructor at Century Bridge. I've been with the company for almost a year and a half now, um, and I've been tasked today to teach everybody about strategies uh, to how to be the most effective and engaging teacher, uh, how to get those new students to become returning and uh, you know weekly students, because that's obviously what we want. The more students, the more work that is, there is for us and the better for the company. Um, and so I've been tasked today to teach you some effective strategies. There's two different sections to today. So the first will be a before class starts. Um, and then the second section I'll be screen recording and we will be doing, you know, how to use the tools, how to keep students engaged, some strategies to uh, help your students pay, pay attention, particularly younger students. I think that's very important. Um, so any questions or concerns after you're done watching this, you can either reach out to me or you can reach out to Jack and Caleb. Um, so, yep, stay tuned and I hope you are able to learn some things from today. So, uh, I know a lot of our students are 12 or 13 hours ahead of us, so that means early mornings, uh, particularly when we don't have daylight savings time. Um, I remember this summer I was waking up waking up at 4.45 for some of my classes, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so say you have a class at 7.30, I like to wake up at 7.00. Um, I think waking up too close to the scheduled class time uh, leaves me a little bit too lethargic and groggy. Uh, which I don't think uh, allows me to be the most effective teacher. I'm a coffee drinker, so if you are also a coffee or a tea drinker, have it all set up the night before, so you can just hit brew in the morning and you can have your uh, liquid <laughs> liquid gold all ready for you um, the next morning. Um, another thing about the PowerPoint, so make sure you have the PowerPoints downloaded uh, either the night before or you have an external hard drive. So I have an external hard drive. I have everything downloaded onto this external hard drive so I don't have to go onto Google Drive. Uh, you know, that's a little bit time consuming. Um, so I try to open the class about five to 10 minutes before it starts, the scheduled start time. The student will get an email, the student or the parent will get an email and inviting them to join the class with a link. Um, and then I will be ready for them with the PowerPoint upload and everything. I think those are the most effective strategies, you know, right off the bat to have the best class that you can possibly have. Okay, so when starting class, um, I always ask the student how their day was. Um, I usually don't just ask the questions that are on the warm-up slide of the PowerPoint. Those usually pertain to the lesson, um, and you get to those later on, so um, I usually just hold off on those. Um, there's something to be said about starting class pretty much the same way every time. I think that adds a lot of you know repetition and comfort to, for the students. I think that's very important to their learning. Um, you may have to adjust your questions based on the age of your students. It might not be appropriate to ask an elementary school student how you know how their work was or answers which require complex past tense sentence structures. Um, I mean for obvious reasons. Um, some of my favorite questions for my younger students are, how was your day? How was the weather? Um, what did you eat for dinner? Everybody loves talking about food. And then did you have a good day or a bad day? And usually they'll give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, which is always good. Um, and for older students, particularly middle school and high school, I asked them what classes they had that day, um, what their favorite part of the day was, um, and what are you doing this weekend? I think people like talking about the weekend too when they're not in school. Um, after you have started class, you usually move into the new vocabulary for the day. Um, for the younger students, spell out every word with them. For example, which food do you like, Paul? And okay, you like pizza. Uh, say it with me, P-I-Z-Z-A, pizza. Then I always say, great job. Remember always to smile, never get angry or frustrated with the students. Learning English is hard, as I know Many of you think the same thing when learning a different foreign language. Um, tell them that they're doing a great job and improving every day. Um, something that was really hard for me at first was the pace of my speech. I talk fast normally. Um, make sure you really focus on speaking slowly. It's often hard for ESL students to understand when a teacher speaks quickly, particularly if you have an accent. Um, it is important to focus on your speaking and the pace. If you think you sound ridiculous, it is probably the perfect pace. Uh, you want to sound like you are speaking 
at half the speed you normally do um, for them to fully understand the lesson. Um, and don't be afraid to use all of your available resources for class. I tend to use the drawing tool, the circling tool, and the text box. Um, those are all really great. It can emphasize certain words. You can underline things, circle things. It's amazing. Um, if you have any questions about the website in particular, uh, direct them to Jack or Caleb. I don't necessarily know the technical aspects, but if you have questions about how to be you know, better in class, you can direct those questions towards me. Um, as I already said, I've been working for Century Bridge for about a year and a half, so I've had the pleasure to have some students the whole time that I've been working. I have two students that I've had uh, since basically the day I started. Um, so it's important to understand what works and doesn't work for your particular student and their expectations before you start class. So some of my students want to be corrected frequently about their grammar and some just want to be pushed to improve their conversational abilities and um, they don't have that much emphasis on grammatical you know correctness um, and they would rather just learn vocabulary and just be more fluent in conversation um, so there's no shame in asking either the student their parents or uh, Jack and Caleb they might know uh, what the student is searching for specifically what these students want before you start class um, also, on the note of paying like, students and their attention spans, the younger students sometimes find it hard to pay attention. I, I've had one student who, uh, when he started, it was really hard for him to sit still, and now he can sit through 30, 45 minutes without a problem. Um, I think the younger students in particular, it's harder for them to pay attention. So some strategies that I have for that is allowing them to draw on the slides after you've completed them. So I'll run through the slide twice if it's a dialogue or if it's questions, you know, fill in the blank, etc. I'll run through the slide twice and say, hey, listen, Matthew, if you complete this and get it all correct, like you can draw on the slide. And of course, he always gets it correct when he can draw afterwards. Um, and so he'll be able to do that. And it really allows him to pay attention. And that's a really great strategy that I found. Um, also, I know my students, a lot of my students have a favorite video that we've played during class. So I will say, hey, Paul, if you're really, really great today, you'll be able to watch a video at the end of class. And you know, that always pushes them to, um, you know, to pay more attention and to work really hard during class, which I think is good because that helps with their retention, vocabulary retention and, you know, grammar development and stuff like that. So um, again, if you guys have any questions, either reach out to Jack or Caleb. Um, I'm sure you have their WhatsApps. You can also ask them for uh, my WhatsApp. You can add me on WhatsApp, 214-998-9042. Uh, 